Hi, uh, today I'm going to be making a solid wood countertop. Uh, I'm making mine out of walnut. Uh, you can use almost any hardwood you like uh, for a countertop, but in my case I'm using walnut. So the first thing I had to do was cut the boards down to different lengths. I think I did five foot lengths, three foot lengths, and then either a foot and a half or two foot lengths. Uh, the reason for this will be a little more clear in a little bit, but it basically lets me stagger the boards more easily. I then jointed one side on all these boards so that I would have a flat reference surface uh, to cut the boards down on my table saw with. The next thing you have to do is cut all of these boards down into strips. Um, basically the thickness of or the width of these strips is going to be a little bit thicker than what you want your final countertop thickness to be. We leave a little bit extra so when we process it through the planer and everything you have some extra stock on the boards. Basically do that for all your boards and make all these strips. A bunch of them. And at this point I'm just laying out all of these boards, uh, staggering them. And the idea is just to make sure that I have enough pieces in the end to make a countertop that's a deep enough and long enough. I did have to go through and make more boards down the road. Uh, but this is kind of what it looks like in a really rough state. On some of my longer boards, I had some pretty noticeable bow. So I went through and cut out any sections where there was a bow or a knot or anything like that that could be a problem. I also went through and cut off all the ends to make them square. That's basically what I'm doing right here. Once you've done that you should have a whole bunch of boards that look like this. The next thing I had to do was send all of these boards through my planer so that they would all be the same exact thickness. This took quite a while, but it's something you have to do. Then when you're done with that, they should all look like this. Most of the boards are pretty flat and square, but I do have a few pieces that still have some bow on them. And I tried to cut out the bows on a lot of longer ones that I had. Having a little bit of bow uh, in a board is not a big deal at all, really. Uh, if it's a drastic bow, even over a shorter distance, then it could be a problem. But like this piece right here, it's clearly got a pretty good bow in it. But when we go to clamp this up with glue, it'll get pulled tight. And even if I just pull this by hand, you can see how it closes up. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that your reference surface, whatever you're putting these boards on to glue up and dry on, needs to be as flat as possible. I have this three quarter inch thick melanine board. Um, it, works, it worked really well, but if I had it up off the ground on sawhorses, it kind of bowed in the middle a little bit. So putting it on the ground like this uh, worked a lot better. I wasn't 100% sure if when I glued these boards up if they would stick to this melanine board. So I put parchment paper down underneath just in case because the last thing you want to do is glue your new countertop to this underboard. So I, I glued these up in three different sections. And so this is one section. I laid most of the boards on their sides, put as much glue as I could possibly uh, fit on there. I also went through and put uh, glue on the the ends of these joints so when they push up against each other they'd have s some glue there too.
then uh, clamp it up and use every clamp that you own if you can. Okay, got uh, my three sections glued up. Um, I glued them up like this so that I can still put them through my planer uh, and get them flat. Because uh, as it is right now, not all of these boards are perfectly level with each other. Um, if I had to make one suggestion, uh, if you plan on doing this, try to stick to putting together the boards that are like this th uh, wider, narrower. Don't do one that's this wide. I kind of went all out on the last one. And what happened was, is I was able to get these set pretty, uh, pretty easily. And then as I got to these, the glue was starting to kind of dry already. So I was rushing and some of my boards are not pretty. Like I have one here that's sticking up quite a bit. That's not the end of the world. Uh, I can just plane it down and it'll still be flush with the top. The underside, it'll be in a little bit, but that's something nobody ever sees once it's installed, so. So for this little nub that was sticking up, I just used an electric hand plane. Made a fast work of it. If you, you could use a regular hand plane, or even if you don't have that, you could just use you know an orbital sander with a heavy grit and take it down, but this way was pretty quick. Then uh, I just had to stick these sections through my planer and just made sure uh, when I was done that they were all planned to the same thickness. The bottom side that still had a bunch of this parchment paper stuck to it from the glue. You just run it through the planer and that takes most of it off. I did run these through my jointer one last time just so that the edges were square. Okay. Uh, I basically got it ready to uh not quite glue up, I'm going to use biscuit uh, joints on this to keep these level with each other. But I've basically gone through and just clamped them together with no glue or anything, just to see if all the gaps close up. Um, and they more or less do. There's a tiny bit here, but I think once I get a clamp on there, that'll close up. The only places that I have noticeable gaps is right on the ends, but these are getting cut off anyway, so I'm not too concerned about those. Here I'm just marking out some spots where I'm going to install some biscuit slots. At this point I'm ready to glue these three sections together so that I have the full width of my countertop. Now the next step was to obviously glue them up. So I put glue uh, along the seams and then put my biscuits in and clamped them up together. So I had it clamped up for a couple days, if I remember right, and so it's ready to take the clamps off. And now I can cut the ends off, make it square. Okay, so I've got a few spots in here where, you know, I didn't get the two boards squished together perfectly. A few of them throughout the piece. So, uh, I got this product. I have absolutely no idea if this is gonna work. So I'm, it's basically just a resin, but it's wood colored, I guess. Um, so I'm gonna mix a little bit of this up and kind of test it in maybe a piece that's on the back or something. Let it dry and just see how it looks as a filler. And if it looks right, then I'm just gonna go through, mix up more of this and go through and fill in a bunch of these little holes. The, probably the worst offender I have is, this is gonna be the front of the countertop. And somehow I got this <laughs> massive little gap right there. So hopefully it looks um, decent. So th this is what the uh, glue or epoxy 
uh, that's the color it is naturally. It's kind of a light tan color. I didn't really like how that looked. So I found some like dark, I thought it was black, but it's more grayish color and stained a little bit and put it in this piece and that looks that looks a little bit better but still a bit dark and then I actually got just some walnut stain uh, mix that up with it and did it on these two and I think that'll look better they're gonna be darker lines but I'd rather have darker lines than, uh, than the light stuff the other thing I did do was put a chamfered edge uh, around the countertop at least the sides that were going to be facing uh, the person not the wall and then I went through and sanded it I ran through all the grits I think I started with 80 and then worked my way up to 400 and that worked pretty well uh, next thing I needed to do was clean up all the dust and I just used some mineral spirits here and did that a few times and then went over it with a dry cloth to try and pick up any extra leftover dust So I'm going to be using water locks to finish this. I've heard good things about it for uh, countertops and even flooring. So I'm going to give it a go. Um, if it doesn't end up holding up, I can always just resurface this and use like a polyurethane or something. But I'm going to, I'm going to try this and see how it turns out. So I'm going to put a coat on and then basically it has to dry for 24 hours. And I'm basically just going to put as many coats on as I can over the next week or two. and then. It should be more or less ready to install, so let's do this first. So this is the first coat I put on it, and I think if I remember right I got seven or eight coats out of this can, and it worked pretty well for the most part. Basically I just do a coat, let it dry for 24 hours, put another coat on, and just rinse it a piece. Then after all the coats I put on, once they dried sufficiently, it was time to install the countertop. Uh, I basically just held these in with a couple of screws on the underside. Uh, I made the rest of these cabinets as well. I was in the middle of doing that when I made this countertop, so there's no drawer fronts or anything on any of these. That's why it looks a little weird, but the countertop's done, and it turned out really well for tackling this without really knowing exactly what I was doing. It, I'm pretty happy with the results. Even these little gap fills uh, turned out okay. And the worst one on the front, I don't think looks that bad at all. So hopefully you found this video helpful if you want to try and tackle this project yourself. If you'd like to see more of these project videos in the future, make sure to subscribe. And thanks for watching.